one exit north of Highway 75 and 121. Welcome back to the Traders Network. I'm Michael Yorba, broadcasting to you live from 1190 AM iHeartMedia Studios and worldwide through yorbamedia.com. All right, I'm joined on the show with Sagar Govial, uh, Chairman and CEO of Semtrex and a uh, publicly traded company, CTEI, on the OTC. All right, Sagar, welcome to the show. How are you? Good, Michael. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Am I pronouncing your name correctly? It's, uh, it's pronounced Sagar. Sagar. Thanks for helping me out with that. All right. Uh, you've got um, some, some real strong background in diversified industrial engineering, but I, I really would like to back up a little bit and give you a chance to kind of give our audience a flavor for who you are, who's steering this boat, and then also we can get into what uh, Semtrex does. Sure, sure. Thanks. Um, well, uh, I'm uh, the CEO and chairman of Semtrex. I've been with the company for um, over about six years now. And I've been um, CEO for the last three, and I've been really trying to push Semtrex onto a high growth uh, trajectory. Uh, and I think we've uh, demonstrated that we, we are able to do that um, with our considerable growth in the last five years of uh, over 1,000% in top-line growth. That is amazing. And not to mention you've branched out. You have got six offices worldwide. You're not just in the United States. That's correct. That's correct. We have about 235 employees uh, worldwide. All right, now tell everybody what you do. Well, Semtrex is a, a diversified technology company. We operate in two bri uh, primary business segments, um, the first one being electronics manufacturing services and uh, the second one being environmental products and services. Um, so uh, the environmental products and services business really consists of air pollution control equipment and uh, environmental monitoring instruments that we offer. Okay. What industry sectors are you penetrating with this technology? Well, uh, for this business segment, we really go after uh, industries like the power industry, metals and mining, chemicals processing. Um, that's really where we see a lot of uh, dirty particulate that's generated in manufacturing processes. So whenever you have these dirty processes, they require different types of uh, industrial air filtration as well as monitoring for uh, environmental compliance purposes. Is there, is, you know, we all remember the, our first real big look, or everybody in the world got a big look at what was going on in China through the Olympics. Is there any um, appeal for your product there? Absolutely. I mean, there is a tremendous opportunity for uh, the market in China, and really where Semtrex has seen significant growth uh, is in the Asian markets. Last year alone, our sales increased 25% in Asia alone. Uh, in China itself, uh, you know, if you think about it and you look at the country, I mean, they spend in 2011 $97 billion on environmental protection, and in 2013, about $162 billion. So it's almost close to double. And, uh, you know, that really shows how much of a problem it is there. And we expect that you know, as the economy continues to grow in China and India, uh, and, uh, you know, there's almost 600 million people who are going to be entering the middle class in those two countries alone. Uh, you know, they demand a higher quality of life, uh, better infrastructure, and this requires um, more power in those sectors, but also environmental controls for the power that's generated. And that's right up what Semtrex does in terms of requiring different products that we offer um, from the industrial air filtration as well as the, the monitoring side of our business. Well, when it comes down to it, when we're talking, what, that's the growth rate, that's the industry sector. Everybody can connect the dots on how those India, Asia, in, in a whole are going to be just a huge boon for you, not to mention what you've already done, 1,000% revenue growth. I mean, that's huge. But what, what, in fact, actually are we doing? How are you reducing the pollution that is going into the world, whether it's air, land, or sea? Well, we focus on the air market. And so when you are building a, a power plant, uh, usually in, in places like Asia, they use cheaper fuel. So you're talking oil, you're talking coal. And when you're burning coal, there's a lot of pollution that's generated from these processes in, in, the, in, the, in the process to generate power. And so uh, it requires systems like that we manufacture, these dust filtration technologies, which cleans the gas that's coming through the power plant. And as a result, clean air is emitted into the atmosphere. So 
uh, in order for these countries to start uh, lowering their levels of pollution, they have to use these uh, types of equipment to make sure that the air that's coming out of their power generation facilities is clean. Okay, that requires a lot of R&D on your end to make sure that you're staying ahead of the curve. Where are you on that? Well, actually, we have been in business since 1955, and so our technology is very established, and we have you know, technology that has 99% efficiency in removal of particulates. So uh, the, the, the reality is that in the U.S., the market for, you know, they're, they're not building many new power plants here in the U.S., so the market here is not as robust as it is in Asia. So we, in the last few years, have really taken an effort to go from being a domestic company to being an international company, and that's the reason for our, our success and our growth in terms of taking, um, going after the worldwide market. Okay, and where do you see I mean, uh, th- this business is just going to get bigger and bigger? It's a big, big political push here in the United States. Is it, I know that you mentioned they were doubling the money that they're putting out, but is that just trivial money for these people, or are they actually going to get serious? And this thing is really going, they're really going to reduce the pollution part, particulates that are out there. No, I think they are going to get, going to get serious about it. You can see, uh, you know, that all these countries are really starting to take it seriously. Um, and that really shows from the, the spending that's going on, the projects that, uh, that are coming out. And, uh, you know, there's a growing awareness uh, in, in China and in India. China, there was a documentary that came out um, a couple weeks ago talking about the environmental uh, problems that they're having in Beijing. And, uh, you know, the U.S. and China have now both uh, agreed to uh, reducing greenhouse uh, emissions over the next two decades. And I think that's also a clear commitment from uh, comp- uh, the countries that uh, they will actually, you know, come to some kind of understanding about how to reduce, reduce greenhouse gases as well as uh, air pollution. So through your technology, do you see that we're actually going to get a, get a handle on this or is it going to require more companies like yours that are to, to really put a dent in it, or, or and, and what time frame do you think we're actually going to see this turn around and maybe come back the other way where we actually can live in a cleaner world through your technology? Well, I think it's a collaborative effort. I don't think there's necessarily one uh, solution for everybody. Um, right. But I think that there is a growing awareness, and I think that as uh, these um, countries go through this process of industrialization as well as uh, understanding the ramifications of polluting their environment like in China and India, they're going to take serious steps and they are getting serious about it now. And I think that globally we'll see over the next 15 years that, um, you know, there's going to be uh, more stringent policy as well as uh, technology in place like uh, we offer to really help um, get our hands around this problem worldwide. Okay. All right. And and how big do you see this market growing? Um, because obviously, if we're going to pay more attention to it, there's going to be more money put into it. Yeah. I. You know. In. Uh, it's, it's respect to our specific market, we see it. Yeah. You know. There's a, a new five billion dollar market just now in the next three years alone for just our segment. So, uh, we see that as a tremendous opportunity. Naturally, we do have. You know. We do compete with other companies for this space, but uh, it, it's growing. But. I mean, India is going to be doubling the size of their uh, electric grid in the next 10 years. So, I mean, you know, if that should give you some perspective in terms of what's going to happen, um, you know, basically doubling in size their capabilities. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's a huge industry, uh, and it's growing rapidly at over 25% per year. All right, now that's that's a big clip. What about in Latin America? Because we've t- we've spoken about Asia, and everybody's kind of got that that they, most people glump uh, a group uh, Europe in with that too. But Latin America is starting to, you know, really come on strong with a lot of their industries. It, uh, are, do you have offices down there? Are you looking in that part of the world? Right now, we really don't have a, a significant presence there. We do see some uh, opportunity for the future, uh, but really uh, our presence and our focus um, and our ability to get more business has really come from the Asian and Middle Eastern markets. Okay. All right. What if, you didn't mention anything about the Middle Eastern markets. There, you know, what's going on there? Well, they are uh, you know, spending a lot on um, infrastructure, uh, power plants, um, you know, obviously they're always upgrading their refineries. So all these different projects um, also require the same type of equipment so that we manufacture for 
uh, you know, because in order for, uh, you know, the refineries also need power generation, uh, and they also require industrial air filtration. So our technologies are used in, in that regard as well. Okay. All right. Uh, if you want to, um, we've got about a minute left. Uh, give us your contact information so that uh, some of the, you know, the listeners on the show who are seeking, um, you know, something that's scalable in, in, a, in a market space that uh, is getting more and more attention, you know, can reach out to you. Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, uh, listeners can definitely check us uh, on our website, uh, www.semtrex.com. Uh, you know, that's really the best place to, to find out more about uh, their company and, and what we're doing and, and where uh, we're headed. And, you know, we are, uh, you know, obviously a public company and all of our information is available online uh, on our website. And, and that's really the best place to get all that information. Great. And the stock symbol? And the stock symbol is uh, CTEI. All right. Cigar, I'll be right back with you on the other side. Let's see what you're doing, because you mentioned oil and gas. I want to talk about what we're doing here in uh, the United States with your company. Thanks. All right, we'll be right back with uh, Cigar Goville on the other side of this break. BTJ Consulting was founded specifically to consult with accredited investors on how best to manage their oil and gas investments. The emphasis is not only on direct participation in drilling projects, but includes opportunities in the purchasing of oil rigs, service and equipment companies, real estate, and or the purchase of royalty interest through lease pooling. This strategy further mitigates risk and spreads their clients' investments over the entire sector whenever possible. For more information, call 469-518-5008 or info at btjconsulting.com. 469-518-5008 or info at btjconsulting.com. That's 469-518-5008 or info at btjconsulting.com and tell them Yorva sent you. I'm Lex Friedman. I run my own business, so I know from experience, hiring new employees can be tough. Posting your job in one place isn't enough to find quality candidates. If you want to find the perfect hire, you need to post your job on all the top job sites. And now you can with ZipRecruiter.com. You can post your job to 50-plus job sites, including social networks like Facebook and Twitter, all with a single click. Find candidates in any industry nationwide. Just post once and watch your qualified candidates roll in to ZipRecruiter's easy-to-use interface. And with ZipRecruiter's premium traffic boost, you can get up to three times more candidates. Quickly screen applicants, rate them, and hire the right person fast. Find out why ZipRecruiter has been used by over 200,000 businesses. Right now, our listeners can try ZipRecruiter for free. Plus, get 30% off your first traffic boost by going to ZipRecruiter.com slash info. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash info. One more time, to try it for free, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash info. Men, if you're like me, you appreciate the feeling of a clean, smooth shave from a quality blade. The sort of shave that cuts clean without the burn. So why are you messing around with generic razors that cost 32 bucks for an 8-pack when you can shave with Harry's high-quality German-engineered blades for half the price? And if saving money and a clean shave isn't incentive enough, Harry's will give you their starter set, complete with a razor, three of their world-famous blades and shaving cream for just 10 bucks. And shipping is always free. We'll also give you 5 bucks off your first order. Our way of saying thank you for trying us. How are we able to save you all this money and still give you the best shave you'll ever enjoy? By owning the factory that manufactures them. That's how. So go to harrys.com right now and enter code 7711 at checkout. That's harrys.com, code 7711. I'm Dr. James, founder of Diamond Physicians, a concierge medicine practice located in Dallas, Texas. Our Diamond 360 Advanced Physical Exam has been created for people like you who live a high-stress, fast-paced life. Every 40 seconds, someone in the U.S. experiences a life-changing heart attack or debilitating stroke. Negative stress tests and normal cholesterol levels do not exclude you. Half of all fatal heart attacks occur without warning. Diamond goes beyond traditional medicine with the Diamond 360 Advanced Physical Exam, proven to prevent heart attacks, strokes, and diabetes. Contact Diamond now at 214-395-3491. That's 214-395-3491. Or visit our website at diamondphysicians.com to take the Diamond Challenge. If your Diamond 360 reveals perfect health, receive a full refund. 
hope your loved ones will thank you. Welcome back to the Traders Network. I'm Michael Yorba, your host, broadcasting to you live from the Dallas KFXR 1190 AM iHeart Media Studios, worldwide through yorbamedia.com. I'm joined with Segar Goval, Chairman CEO of Semtrex, and symbol is CTEI. All right, Segar, sorry for uh, messing up your name, but I appreciate. Hopefully, I got it right this time. <laughs> no problem. All right, let's talk about what you're doing in the oil and gas industry. You, you touched on it in, in uh, about the Middle East, but we've also got stuff that's happening here in the United States. And since uh, we're coming on strong, right now rig count's way down, but when it comes back up, uh, and there's a lot of refineries here. So what are, what are you doing in that sector? Well, that's a great question. So uh, for us, uh, this uh, you know recent oil and gas boom uh, here in the U.S. has been uh, really great. And uh, you know, there's a there's a couple different opportunities for us, but uh, you know, with the, the enormous amount of uh, new wells that have come up due to hydraulic fracking, uh, they all require propens, which are used in the fracking process. And um, you know, the amount of uh, propent or uh, frac sand that's been uh, generated uh, in the last three years has tripled, um, you know, to 30 million tons annually. So. Um, and, and each well requires um, several tons, uh, you know, to get the, uh, the oil out. And uh, many frac sand producers require the same technology that we provide, industrial air filtration technology, because of um, the dust that's generated when you're producing or refining, processing frac sand. So as this uh, new wells start to come back and um, this industry continues to thrive in the United States, we're seeing more and more opportunity in that regard. So uh, that's, a, that's a great area which we expect um, over the next few years to, to come back strong. Give me an idea what you're thinking is going to happen in that industry sector to you know, come back strong, because there's a lot of money riding on that industry coming back strong, let alone the health of the United States. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I think that uh, oil prices won't necessarily stay um, this low for that long. And um, you know, I think it, it, it's bound uh, for the supply and demand to sort of uh, equalize a, a bit. But uh, in, in the U.S., th- there should be, you know, no question that over the long term that this will still be um, uh, a strong sector for, uh, for us continued. Uh, and, and I think it makes sense from, uh, you know, we, we need to be a producer here in the United States rather than uh, importing our oil. So, uh, you know, from a policy point of view, it, it definitely makes sense. And uh, you know, again, as that uh, industry continues to come back with the price of oil coming back up, um, you know, there's no question that there's going to be growing demand for frac sand and, and then naturally growing demand for our products as well. Industry sector is coming up uh, in the near future where you're going to be uh, um, present we're here domestically, we're, you know, because we, we deal with emerging market stories here more than more than mature companies. And I'd like to get that from you. Well, I think uh, this oil and gas industry is definitely um, where we, we see a lot of the, the domestic growth happening with our products. Um, you know, we think that the, the, the price of oil, will, it, this uh, decline in oil price is a temporary phenomenon. We also sell different types of monitoring equipment to refineries. Uh, as you may know, the oil that's coming out of uh, these various wells um, is oftentimes different than some of the oil that these refiners were originally built uh, to refine. Mm-hmm. And uh, as a result, they need new analyzers, new monitoring equipment. And so that some of our product offering um, you know, is oriented around monitoring properties of crude oil. Uh, and as a result, uh, we expect that there's going to be greater demand for that as well. So um, we do think that maybe there's a, you know, because the price of oil is a little bit uh, lower, that it's, it's uh, a little bit... Uh, quieter, but this is um, going to be a short-term thing. Definitely. I, I mean, I'd rather be buying it at 40, watching it go to 80, than 80, watching it go to 40. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, you were recently, you know, uh, we didn't even bring your age up, but uh, at 28, the CEO of a company that was recently awarded top 40 under 40. Tell us about that. Yeah, I was, uh, well, uh, well, thank you for uh, bringing that up. Um, you know, it, it's certainly uh, humbling. I was, uh, re- you know, recognized by uh, Stony Brook University, which is my alma mater, uh, as being a top 40 under 40. Um, and, yeah, I guess, uh, you know, being 28 and, and, and CEO of a publicly traded company is uh, not so common. But, um, 
you know, I think we've uh, demonstrated a history of success, and, uh, you know, I take it as just another challenge uh, to go out there and, and, and show what we can do and what I can do. So um, we, we look forward to that. Obviously, you've got some, some visionary applications to your processes. You know, give us a little education on what is it that you're doing that gets you to the, the, the top level and being recognized for that? What are you doing with the company that makes, makes your company have that growth rate that you just mentioned and, uh, um, and get recognized for it? There's something different there. I want to hear about that. Well, we really focus on, you know, going where the, the, the growth is and, uh, you know, finding out where the products um, are going to have the, the, the greatest impact uh, and the greatest demand. So, uh, and then really focusing on, uh, you know, being a service provider, being, uh, being able to add value to our customers. Uh, and I think if you have that sort of laser focus, you can really find that um, customers, customers will buy into what you're offering, um, and, and continue to ask for more uh, if you continue to, to deliver. And, and really, that's what we focus on here at Semtrex is to uh, you know, be a, um, a dependable, reliable supplier uh, to our customers and, and going where, where the demand is. And so you know, in the last few years, it's in domestically with the frac sand and uh, the oil and gas industry, we've seen uh, you know, strong growth. And then, uh, you know, I think it was uh, part of our, our, our business plan to really focus on emerging markets. Uh, and that really paid off well for us. So, uh, you know, that's really been uh, our strategy as of late. Okay. All right. Now, companies don't run themselves, especially public companies, don't run themselves with one person. So there's got to be some team, uh, team leadership and teamwork within your organization that uh, you find that's, that's different with you and your company than, than you see with other, other people in your industry sectors? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's by uh, no means an individual effort. It's, uh, it's definitely our team. Uh, you know, we have a great group of talented uh, individuals here at the company. Um, they're highly motivated, and, and they love what they do. Um, and, and we have fun doing it, and I think that's the most important thing. But we have um, very sharp, engin- uh, sharp engineers um, who are talented, uh, and great uh, customer service representatives. So, um, you know, we uh, pride ourselves on being able to um, satisfy our, our, our customers and making sure that, um, you know, our customers uh, are satisfied and recommend us for the future. Uh, and that's really, uh, you know, what it, what it comes down to is a total team effort. Yeah, I can see that. Any, any, we've got about two and a half, maybe three minutes left in the interview. Uh, anything on the investment side that you feel separates you from anybody else in your field that you wanted to bring out? I want to give you some elbow room on this one. Sure, sure. Well, you know, if investors want to take a look at us, uh, you know, I, you know, believing, uh, you know, when I look at our company uh, in, in the market, I certainly think we're undervalued. So it's certainly a great time. For, for investors to sort of take a, a deeper look at our company, look at some of the industry uh, uh, comparables and, and kind of see where we are. But from our point of view, uh, it, it's a great time to, to own our stock, uh, you know, because we are undervalued. And we've demonstrated a commitment to building shareholder value. I think that's the most important thing. And one of our goals for the next, uh, you know, this calendar year is to, to get on a major exchange like NASDAQ or New York Stock Exchange uh, you know, we feel that with 47 million in revenue and seven percent, uh, seven, uh, seven cents per share earnings, that uh, we really stand out from a lot of the OTC companies, uh, and that that's really the next step for us is, is to, to to gain that level of uh, credibility and demonstrate that we're a real player in the industry. Uh, so that's really what we're focused on with our growth, and I think. Uh, you know, if investors take a look at um, the, the fundamentals of the company, they'll they'll be impressed and, and see that it's a great time to buy our stock. Great. And you're doing good for the world. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, uh, you know, it, it's uh, an opportunity to own a company that's helping to uh, improve the environment and, um, you know, is seeing growth um, worldwide in, in that respect. So yeah. it's a way to capitalize on that. I, I have a friend, friend of mine, uh, Vince Molinari, and uh, he was a... Uh, um, uh, 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 impact investing correspondent for the show, and that's what—that's one of the things that was the primary uh, primary objective that's uh, been coming up with a lot of endowments or making investments and things of that nature is impact investing. It make money by doing good, and that's a, that, that's the way I get I, I get the feel. You, that's what you're doing. Absolutely, absolutely. The opportunity to um, have uh, you know a sustainable impact on the environment as well as 
uh, recognize an economic benefit, uh, you know, that's the, 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 the perfect pair. And, uh, you know, that's really what uh, investors should strive for because unless shareholders and investors demand the companies that they own to take uh, responsibility for the impact on their environment, you really aren't going to see a change in philosophy from companies who operate these dirty manufacturing facilities. You know? So it really, you know, if, if investors and shareholders uh, take pride and an interest in that, I think you'll see a change. Good. We will. All right. Sagarb, thanks for, for coming on the show and continue doing good. Great. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having us. My pleasure. All right. Sagar Govil, Chairman, CEO, Simtrex Symbols, right. C-T-E-I, Simtrex.com. All right. We'll be right back on the other side of this break with Robert Herzog, CEO, eCaring. 